welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is korean and i do videos on different types of crafts and budgeting so if you're interested in that i hope you stick around and subscribe but today i'm going to be doing a video explaining how to make these transfers so i posted a picture in a facebook group well a couple of facebook groups on how i made this transfer and i was getting a lot of questions so it was kind of hard to answer all of the questions as fast as they were coming so i decided to do a video just in case anyone else has questions and you're interested in it so it's kind of like just a q a answering your questions i have it written down because honestly it was so many and i don't really remember what they all are so I'm going to go ahead and answer the ones that I have written down. One of the top questions that I have been getting is, what kind of transfer is it? So it is an eco-solvent transfer, which means it was made with eco-solvent ink. Okay. The next question I was getting a lot of is, what printer do you use? So... I use a regular Epson printer. It is the Epson EcoTank and it is 2803, I believe. That's what it is. It's right here behind me. So no other special printer. I got that printer for $199 plus tax online from Walmart. It came in, I believe, two or three days. It actually got delivered on a Sunday, which is rare in this area but that is the printer that i use another question is am i using sublimation ink no it is not sublimation ink it is eco solvent ink what kind of paper do you use okay it is not paper that you use it is vinyl it's basically heat transfer vinyl but it is not the regular white heat press vinyl so you couldn't go get regular white HTV and try to use eco solvent ink because it wouldn't work. And let me just add that I am new to this. I literally just started last week. I took vacation and I was off work for like five days in a row and I just started doing it. So I don't have all the answers, but I did a lot of research before jumping into it. So I feel like I know a little bit enough to where I can answer these questions that I have been getting asked, you know, quite a few times. The question that I've been getting asked is, how much does it cost to get started? Okay, so the initial startup to me, I felt like was fairly reasonable, reasonably priced. Um, my Epson printer, like I said, I got it for $199, free shipping. I do believe there was some tax on it, but it wasn't very much. You have to buy your ink. My ink was $49. I got it on Etsy. I believe it was free shipping as well. I will leave a link down below to the shop that I got it from. And then I got the vinyl that i use i got that from an etsy shop that you can get it from heat transfer warehouse because i actually bought it from heat transfer warehouse through their etsy shop so there's other shops stalls different places you can get it from about i think it was 30 36 or 39 dollars i apologize for not having the exact price but you guys, if you watch my videos before, some of you know that I literally get off work, come home, get the kids settled, and then I jump into a video. So I didn't have time to write down, you know, what the correct prices were. But for sure, it was not over $40. And then I bought, I believe, two yards. So you could actually get one to try out. And it, I think it's $16. I could, yeah, I think it was $16. Okay, and you also need transfer tape but it's not like the transfer tape you can go buy walmart like the contact paper to pick up like your vinyl when you're doing vinyl on mugs it's not that kind it has to be some type of heat tape and i'll show you what it looks like this is the it's called a mask like 
tape mask. And again, I think this was less than 30. It, this is really cheap. I, mm, I want to say it was less than 20 bucks. I, I really don't know, but you can get that from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I tried to link the shop that I bought it from on Etsy, but this is just the tape that you will use to lay on top of your image before you press it. Other than those things, I don't think that I bought anything extra to be able to get started. So the next question that I get a lot is, which one do I think is better, DTF or Ecosolvent? And let me just say, it's probably going to be a personal preference. But if you notice on my channel, I've done a couple of videos now, I believe, on DTF. If you don't know what DTF is, it is direct to film printing. So my answer was, again, personal preference. But I will say, if you're going to start either crap, please do your research, like watching this video, seeing if you can find any other videos. And when I got started, I, I couldn't find very many videos on YouTube at all. Like there were maybe a couple, but none that really had all of the answers I was looking for. So I really had to look around and, you know, figure a few things out for myself, but just do your research. But I'm going to explain. DTF is direct to film printing. I am also new to that. I just started diving into that, I believe, last month sometimes. And I've shown before some of the transfers that I've made with DTF. I don't have any laying around right now because the ones that I use, I've pressed shirts on them. But what I can say about DTF is the initial startup cost is way more than the eco solvent is going to be. There is a lot involved in DTF. No matter which printer you get, there are some printers that are labeled as DTF printers. But from my research, I don't know if any printer is actually a DTF printer. It's just printers that you're able to do DTF with. But again, I'm new to that. I could be wrong. I'm no expert. I'm not claiming to be. But most of the DTF printers that I have seen advertised for sale from DTF Superstore, eBay, some on websites from China, they are very expensive. And I mean like thousands, thousands of dollars. So the printer that I use for DTF is an Epson XP 15,000. And it was, to me, it was a lot financially to get started. It's hard trying to find a printer that you can convert to DTF because you can't get any kind of Epson printer and convert it to DTF. There's certain printers that are going to work. Most people, there are a lot of Facebook groups on DTF. So if you're interested in DTF, please look on Facebook. If you're on Facebook for some of those groups, because you are going to find a lot of answers and a lot of help. But the printer that I have for DTF, it is really not recommended for it. It's just a cheaper way to get started with it because you can get one refurbished from Epson website for less than $300. I believe I got mine for $279 that was with tax, I believe. The printer, $300, okay? The ink, you're going to need ink. You're going to need the film for the transfers. You're going to need powder, I think, offhand right now. Some people use empty cartridges. It's a lot. I did not get, there's a certain RIP software that only works with DTF. So whatever printer you get, if you're able to convert it to DTF, you want to make sure that you look for the right software for that printer because some softwares may work, some may not. So it is a big initial investment. Way more than I probably would have liked to spend for what all you have to do with the printer. Because the printer takes white ink, white ink is known to clog and, you know, clog your heads on your machine. So you have to do a lot of maintenance. You have to run your printer every day and not just one transfer here and there. 
like run it multiple times during the day, do maintenance sometimes more than once a day. And by maintenance, I mean taking your cartridges out, shaking them. It is a lot. I'm not really going to get into all of that because the video is not DTF, but the question was what I prefer. I prefer the eco solvent transfers. It's just easier. I work Monday through Friday. I work outside of the home. I have three kids. Just not. It's, it's okay. And I'm not going to stop doing DTF because I did invest a lot of money in it. I just, I think I've learned my printer enough now to where I know before I get started printing, I'm going to have to run some head cleanings. And after I run some head cleanings, I'm going to have to print a lot for my white ink to get unclogged. So if you have that time, if you want to do the investment, go for it, join some Facebook groups and ask questions, research different printers and have fun with it. The transfers turn out really great. And I've made some really pretty shorts with it. So if that's what you're into, try it out. Another question that I get is how does it work? Simple answer. If you have converted an Epson printer to sublimation, converting a printer to eco solvent ink is literally no different. None at all. Now, I will say this. It is best from what I have learned to get a new printer. You can, I know some people will have like an Epson, like the workforces, and you've been using them for either sublimation or regular printing, and you may want to switch out the cartridges and use, you know, eco solvent ink. Don't do it. I haven't heard good things about that. It's just easier to get a new printer, and that's what I did, because if you look around my craft room, I literally have one, two, three, four, five. I have five printers on these desks and underneath the desk, there's another printer. And then over there in the corner, there's also another printer. So I have different printers that do different things. So get a new printer basically, okay? Once you get that printer, you're gonna set it up the same way you set up any other printer, any other Epson printer. When it calls for the ink, Instead of putting the ink that came with your printer in, you're going to put your eco solvent ink in, and that's going to be it. And it's converted. I don't know why they call it converted, but after that, you're done. Let me backtrack just a little bit and show you the vinyl that I use. Remember, I said you can't use regular HTV. It looks like regular HTV, but it's not. This is the Scissor Color Easy Print Vinyl. So that is what you're gonna want to use. That's if you're going to do t-shirts, which I think most people that had the questions, they wanna know so they can do t-shirts. So you're gonna get the vinyl and you're gonna need a cutting machine. I don't know if you've heard of rolling printers and there's other kinds, they're really big, I don't know much about them, but that's basically what a rolling printer does. I wanted a rolling printer, but I don't want to pay as much for what they are right now. So starting out, I wanted like to try it out just to see if I like it and maybe upgrade soon. Later is my plan because I don't know with the rolling printer, you can do different multiple images and it's just a big print and I just want one to be honest. Okay. I need to do, you're going to need a cutting machine first of all. You can either use Cricut, Silhouette. It doesn't matter which one. I don't think one is better than the other. And I know there are a lot of people that may disagree with me, but I have both. I have had a Cricut now for over seven years. And I've had the Cameo for a lot of years. I actually gave that away to a friend's daughter. And now I have the Silhouette Portrait. I've had that for a while. So I've worked both programs and software is different, but I don't know. Either one will work for what you need to do. I'm personally using my Cricut just because I like it better, honestly. <laughs> With an Epson printer, the printer that I got, it is not a wide format printer, meaning I can only print like eight by 14 inches, I believe it is. 
Now, since I bring my images up in Cricut and I use print and cut, you are limited to the to how big the transfer can be, okay? Because you can't print an image 12 by 12 for print and cut with the Cricut because it's just not gonna let you do it. Now, if you have the Cameo silhouette, you can do that. And I think that's why some people prefer the Cameo over the Cricut. But I have found with my Cricut, if I turn my design sideways, it's still large enough to be able to go on an adult shirt, like an adult medium, an adult large, maybe even an adult extra large. Anything over than an extra large, I probably, I would suggest using the Cameo to cut that. And also with the Epson printers, if you want to use the Cameo to do wide format printing, you're, that printer is not going to work. You're going to want like an Epson, I think it's just a regular, it's an EcoTank 15,000 maybe. Don't quote me on that. And I know they have like the Epson EcoTank that's, I think it's 85, 50. I'm not sure. But just know that you're going to be limited to how big you can print the transfers with the printer and if you use the Cricut versus the Silhouette. But either way, you're going to need a cutting machine. I don't know if a brother scan and cut will work. I am not familiar with the brother scan and cut at all, so I can't answer that question if that's what you have. I don't see why you can't. I just don't know the answer to that. I want you to be prepared when you're ordering your supplies. You may want to order a little bit more vinyl because when you first start printing out your transfers, you may not get it exactly right and you're going to you're gonna waste vinyl. But if you're good with printing cut, then it may work out okay for you. But I've wasted a lot of vinyl and I'll, I'll show you some right here. This I actually tried to print out on my portrait and for whatever reason, it, it wasn't happening. It, it, so I wasted that sheet of vinyl. If I can get the image the same size, maybe now, I don't think there's any saving it, but I wasted this vinyl and then I wasted this piece. And I think I kind of, my, I don't know, my portrait was acting kind of crazy when it was cutting wrong, I tried to save the transfer and I stopped the cut and now my portrait is kind of stuck on pause mode. I don't know why, but anyway, I wasted a lot of vinyl. This is the first transfer that I printed out. I still have not pressed it, but I showed this in a video a while back. And then I actually printed out two of these. We're having Grinch Day at work one day this week, so I wanted to be able to make cute shirts. And I don't know if you can tell or how well you can see it around the design. You can see some of the white of the vinyl. Me personally, I do not like that. I have seen where people have made their transfers and they're okay with that white going around the image. I'm not. I keep working with my Cricut printing cut. I've been told before I print to do it with the bleed on it and that'll help. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to. And I'm gonna go ahead and press the shirt and let you see what it's like. And if you have any questions about it, comment down below and I will answer your questions. If I don't know the answer to that question, I will definitely research it and find you an answer. But let me know if you have any questions because I know there were so many, I just could not continue typing and answer everybody's questions. So if there's something you wanna know that I didn't answer, leave it down below and let's press this transfer.
right, I've got my heat press heating up. I did preheat my shirt a little bit. I did it a couple of times just to make sure that I got the moisture out of the shirt. Because with heat transfer vinyl, um, if there's still moisture on the shirt, it won't stick as well. And you don't have to mirror your images for this type of transfer. I hope that's even enough. I didn't really do a line down it like I usually do, but this is a shirt for myself. So if it's a little crooked, I'm not gonna complain. But you wanna make sure that, you know, your shirt is even with the transfer if you're planning on selling, just because you don't want a happy, an unhappy Alrighty. Now, do you have to use butcher paper or a Teflon sheet for heat transfer vinyl? Maybe not. I don't know. I just decided I would. And this is the first shirt that I pressed, so I'm not really sure if the 300 degrees for 15 seconds was enough. Let me make sure my arm is out of the way so you can see this. And you peel it hot. And then I think I'm gonna press it one more time, just for a few seconds. Okay, I went ahead and unplugged my heat press just because this is the heat press that caught on fire. No lie, it caught on fire as I was filming, so. Okay, so I can see that the Teflon sheet is actually pulling my transfer some. So you may not want to do the Teflon sheet or butcher paper without the mask on top of it because it may actually take off some of the image. And black words on black doesn't really show up too well. But let's see. You have it. I think it turned out really well. This is a large shirt. So you can see that even though I printed it and cut it with Cricut, it's still a good size. So Cricut is fine to use. Transfer turned out be better than I thought it would be. Um, again, I don't like the white that's showing on the transfer, but I'm gonna work on that to get that better. But this is for myself and I'm, I'm okay with that for now. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing, like the video, and if you have any other questions, leave me a comment down below. I will answer them, and I will see you guys in the next video.